Yeah. That'd be awkward. Yeah. yeah. That would be really awkward. <laughs> you know, the best thing about drinking in a library is everybody thinks you have deep thoughts. <laughs> All right, you magnificent bastards. What we're talking about are whiskey trails. And there's a bunch of them out there. You got the Tennessee Whiskey Trail, Irish Whiskey Trail, the Malt Whiskey Trails in Scotland. You got the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. I think there's like a few different iterations, versions of what you can trail. You got the American Whiskey Trail. You got the Tasmanian Whiskey Trail. There's, there's a bunch of whiskey trails to choose from, but beyond just a tour of a single distillery, it's a extended tour of multiple distilleries and the distilleries have all gotten together and said yep yeah, even though we're technically competitors if there's a way for us to uh, build awareness that we exist then uh, yeah the rising tide lifts all boats type of deal what they're trying to do is provide a really cool memorable experience and often a great first impression. Now the newest trail that just got kicked off is the Texas Whiskey Trail. And uh, 15 distilleries is a lot of distilleries. I think it's gonna be about 1,200 miles right now to visit all of the Texas Whiskey Trail. If I remember correctly, they've broken it up into three trail segments. So you're not going crazy trying to get down that road and get to all of those different whiskeys. Now, as I am here working, being very productive and not at all distracting Leanne, not at all. <laughs> Daniel is on the Texas Whiskey Trail. He's going across all 1,200 miles. He's visiting these distilleries, and I get to, I get to, I get to work. This is Josh. Josh is what in charge of all tours at Still Austin, yeah, right? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, and maybe one of the best tour guides you'll ever meet. Uh, I haven't been to Still Austin yet. What's uh, what's going on there? Beautiful. Yeah. Where you got food, you've got games, you've got a huge bar. Our whole approach is that at the end of the day, it was made for somebody enjoying and having a good time. And so we want our tour experience to be something that is approachable. That is, uh, we could be as informative as you want to be. We can get into the nerdy nitty gritty, but we'd really rather everyone have a, an awesome time. The one thing that I think if you wanna come visit still that's really going to blow your mind is they've doubled down on an incredible cocktail program. And get a shot at the new bourbon they just released. It's pretty awesome. I've heard good things. I'll yeah. bring you a bottle. You know what? I always liked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few main reasons why you would ever want to do a whiskey trail. Uh, one of the biggest, coolest ones, it's going to be the special bottlings. These are the releases that the distillery has been experimenting with. They've been playing with some ideas, but they never do it with enough quantity to put it onto the marketplace. It's really like a sneak peek in the direction that a, a distillery is thinking about going. And very often those special bottlings, those experiments, those are phenomenal. The other reason why people do trails is to really just get a better understanding of a state's whiskey or a country's whiskey or a category of whiskey. It also lets you try a variety of whiskeys, which especially in the States, sometimes it's really hard to sample a variety of things. You're often very limited to bars that don't have a large selection. And visiting distilleries on whiskey trails is an opportunity to get a little bit more craft, a little bit more grassroots. But really at the end of the day, one of the coolest, coolest best things about going on a whiskey trail is doing it with some friends. This is Nate Powell from Treaty Oak. So five acres worth of things to explore. What can you do that's whiskey related across five acres? I mean, it seems like, yeah, I need a bar stool and a glass and that's all the room yeah. I need. Well, that's because they're doing a lot more than just whiskey. So you walk in and just to the left, you've got an astounding cocktail lounge. What do you guys call that place? The Lab. The Lab. Uh, and then just to the right, or right when you walk in straight in front of you is the giant barn that where you can get the beers, all the different cocktails, all the different spirits they make. A world-class restaurant and a uh, stage for music. How often do we need to show up on the premises before we count as employees and we get to have the garden set? <laughs> I would say you guys are qualified. Ah, yes! Right now we're drinking the new Ghost Hill. Nice to meet you and I look forward to all of the free whiskeys you're gonna hand me whenever I visit. <laughs> The 
Been talking with uh, Daniel, checking in periodically. The previous conversations, I felt like his presence was too large. So, <laughs> so where are you at right now? I'm at Balcones right now with my, my motorcycle windswept beard. At Balcones, what's the thing I definitely want to make sure I do if I ever go? Take the tour where they show you like massive Scottish style stills that are making pot still whiskey uh, in a style dating back hundreds of years. I'm gonna get back to work while you vacation. <laughs> Public Distillery in North Texas, otherwise known as Southern Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, <laughs> low blow, oh low that's blow. a low blow. low blow. If you've made it this far up on the trail, the thing that you absolutely need to do, the world's best corn whiskey. So definitely try that shit out. They're doing cool things like the Igris finishing it in a peated barrel. What are your two uh, favorites right now? Oh, probably the purple corn. Purple corn? That one's gonna be hubris. All right. Uh, and I like the flint corn. So flint, flint corn. corn. Flint What's that corn. creating? So flint corn actually goes into Icarus. So it's got a oh, little bit okay. of a dark chocolate kind of cayenne spice vibe to it. And what's this guy's name? That's Jim Bowie. That's Jim Bowie. Uh, he was born in Kentucky. He's hopefully going to die in Texas. So. <laughs> hopefully not in the Battle of Mexico. Right. That'd be awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Really awkward. yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're at Gulf Coast. That's why it's going to get really noisy here. They're still working on opening up. When do you think? How long? This is Allie, by the way. Hey guys, early July. Early July. <laughs> and they're building this magnificent entrance on the other side of here for a barrel. We're gonna walk over and we're gonna look at their handcrafted pot stills. There's three of them. They crafted all of these themselves and then they lined the interior with packed copper to get the copper impact. Doing double distillation, right? Yeah. So, uh, what's your name, sir? Julian. <laughs> uh, so check these things out. They call them Frank because of why? What was the Frank came from? Because we modified him so much that they look like a Frankenstein. So yeah. somebody said, hey, let's call him Frank. Yeah. So now we have three Franks. <laughs> and if you walk through this door, that is a 42 foot column still. And they built an entire other building with fermenters to keep up with the constant production on this. So these guys are doing contract distilling as well as doing their own stuff. There's a very real chance that not very long from now, this is gonna be one of the largest stories in the entire part of the United States. We're gonna go hang out in the tasting room now, yeah. right? Yeah? Yeah, we are. All right, I'm here with Reed Huddleston at Deep Ellum Distilling. What are we drinking if someone just randomly shows up at the distillery? Well, if you just randomly show up at the distillery and I happen to be here and in a good mood, you might oh. get to taste a little something special. Ah. <laughs> Look at those infusions. Now this is on the Texas whiskey trail and that's because you're creating Texas whiskey and you're doing it in a way that no one else in the entire state is doing as far as I know, yeah. which is Irish style whiskey. What does that mean? Irish style, at least to us and in general means that we're using 51% malted barley, 49% okay. unmalted barley. We're fermenting at a relatively low temperature, but we're most importantly uh, aging in used oak. Look, look, there's a giant still hidden behind. Did you guys see that? Her name's Genevieve. Her, her name? <laughs> That's Mary That's... Kate and Ashley. Ah! <laughs> Someone grew up on Full House. That's all I'm saying. Can I pull this door? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. So check this out. These barrels are all, so they're doing a lot of used barrels here. So when you guys finally get to try the whiskey, which they're hoping is sometime around November, they're gonna be doing things, right? But then what are these things? So this is cool as shit. Look at these. Yeah. So these are fooders. So a fooder is just uh, a term for a very, very large barrel. It's mostly used in the wine industry in France, uh, but we are going to be using, hoping to use these to marry our product and to create a Solera. All right, awesome. thank you, sir. Boom. So we made it all the way to Ranger Creek, hanging out down here in San Antonio. These are really fancy whiskey curtains. These are, uh, most people have never heard of these. But Super fancy. Yeah, yeah. Cause remember this is Ranger Creek brewing and distilling. So you got beer on that side mostly. And he said, spirit work on this side. Look at that. There's only a handful of smoky whiskeys in Texas. You've got uh, Andalusia's Striker and Revenant. You've got Brimstone, Balcones and their Malt. And you've got Rimfire. 
And Rimfire was one of my first introductions to a smoky whiskey in Texas that I really fell in love with. Brimstone just sort of kicked my ass a little bit. But Rimfire just hit right down the home plate for me. But I've heard rumors that there is a more smoky Rimfire. There might be. Rimfire heavy smoke. Yes. Just, typically we smoke about a third of grain bill with Texas whiskey. Right. This one we went higher on the percentage and we just kept smoking it all day. All right, guys. I'm gonna drink some whiskey now. All right, we're hanging out at Ben Mile. So we're in the we're in the barrel house. Marlene and Chandler let us come hang out in here, and they were talking about this cool thing that they're doing, which is once a month you do what? What do you guys call it? We call it our whiskey lab. We're gonna blend whiskeys, different ages, different proofs. So if you come hang out at Ben Milam, you can learn how to blend whiskey. So this is the barrel house, right? And originally Ben Milam was doing a lot of sourcing and making, and now they're also doubling down on making even more, and they're mixing them together with sourced, doing their own releases of stuff that they've made. They're doing kick-ass finishes, and you can see you've got Ben Milam barrels back up here that are a little bit newer, and then all the way to down to look at these things. How beautiful is that? If you get down to Blanco, you can do the Blanco hat trick, but you definitely need to time it around the time when you can come and hang out and blend with them. The tasting room is nice. I think that's where, that's where I'm gonna go now. We're headed there. All right, guys, we made it to Andalusia. And by we, I mean I made it to Andalusia, and I'm joined by some really magnificent human beings like Hunter. I'm the assistant distiller out here. We're gonna ambush Ty really quick. Say hi to all of your fans, Ty. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> if you've not been out to the Andalusia tasting room, this is a look-see. Pairs really well with Irish peated malts. We're gonna walk back to the library and check it out, you ready? This is a place that you should drink. I'm just saying. You know, the best thing about drinking in a library is everybody thinks you have deep thoughts. <laughs> I snuck out and uh, found this industrial park out by Katie. And I was roaming around, some guy was like, hey, drink some whiskey. It was Nick, and he was bringing us MKT. <laughs> now, MKT is in Katy, it's west of Houston. And uh, right now what they're doing is actually uh, releasing whiskey that they hand selected from Gulf Coast where we just were. They did just fill their own first barrel, 53 gallon. And it is the only bourbon that I know of in the United States that has rice as one of its grains. <sighs> Where's that? He said one of my favorite things, which is, hey, have you seen our cigar bar? It's actually incredible. <laughs> we have a cigar bar sitting underneath some old, old rice silos. It feels like you're, you're smoking when you're not supposed to be. I and know. you snuck out into the silos behind the barn. Exactly. And you're right. hoping no one catches you. It's high school all over again. I love it. <laughs> so we're uh, at Talakara. And by the way, what's your name, sir? Justin Jackson. Now we've all been hanging out and drinking barrel selections and things because you should have been here. And uh, <laughs> these guys are doing a four grain bourbon and even the rye they're doing is a four grain rye effectively. In here, we've got production on one half. Now this dramatic use of a lot of variety of grains all in one spirit is creating some really interesting profiles. Now you need to convince them to let you have a barrel proof sample because that's where you get the chance to taste this thing coming alive. I love our 96. It's a good, it's a good solid, uh, uh, smooth four grain bourbon. But if you come, we'll definitely sip a barrel. Now, uh, Rex is gonna kill me because I shot all of this in straight up and down. Yeah, it's just easier to see a lot more of the scene when the camera's turned the right way, Daniel. <laughs> okay, we're at Lone Elm. Five points distilling. I'm here with Logan. He's only half with me right now. The other <laughs> half of his brain is wondering what's going on with his heart cut. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you get here to the tasting room, what you're gonna wanna do is try to uh, do the single barrel flight, which means uh, you get to try multiple different barrels and how different they all are from each other. So this is the barrel house is being built out. So you've also got the 15s right here. Now getting to it when they get their signage done will be a little easier. So let's say between now and July, if you get out here and they're a little bit under construction, you may need to sort of work your way through and ask questions, but they're all very nice. Yeah, someone's always here and you can just stop them and go, hey, where do I go drink whiskey? Yep. And they'll say, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cheers to you guys. Cheers. Welcome to Real Spirits, everybody. 
So this one's part of the Blanco hat trick and they have this really nice property and a massive brewery because if you remember, it's Real Oil Brewing, one of the biggest breweries in Texas. That's their tap room right there. You go up to the tap room and that's where you can try the whiskeys. But if you are here, definitely see if you can get in on the brewing operation and, uh, and see how they're doing all of that. And then you can see where it splits from beer and heads towards now we're gonna make whiskey. All right, we're at Garrison's. If you've not been out here, this is maybe one of the most peaceful whiskey hangouts on the whole trip. Uh, it's just this brilliant little yard with buildings set up for the bottle house and merch and uh, kind of event rooms, restaurants, there's food, I can smell it. There's uh, the whiskey bar right over there. I know that the trail is all about the tours and about the extra things that everybody does, but I'm telling you, if you go to Garrison's, you have to take the tour. Uh, theirs and Balcones and still are probably the three top whiskey tours uh, currently. Everyone else is trying to build up to something that's that good, but Garrison's tour is astounding. And it's a beautiful drive out here in a great environment. Because this is the internet and suspicion is a thing. No, we were not paid. We were not compensated to go visit these distilleries uh, and uh, make this video. Uh, we're on the trail, but we don't really get anything out of showing these other distilleries to you guys. Daniel just had some vacation time. He thought it'd be a, uh, a good idea to go down the trail, shoot some clips, and show you guys what's going on on the Texas Whiskey Trail. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be in Ireland. We're going to be visiting a bunch of distilleries there. Looking forward to that. Okay, so you've gone on the Texas Whiskey Trail. There's a bunch of whiskey trails though. Like, Why yeah. would anybody actually go on a trail as opposed to just pick a distillery and go? Well, I think the idea is that if you just go to random distilleries, you get a bunch of disjointed experiences. Yeah. Maybe good ones, but a bunch of disjointed ones. A trail gives you a cohesive journey through an entire area. So you get to see uh, all the depth and breadth and variety in that one area, but you also get sort of a cohesive journey. Crowded right? Barrel is obviously the best stop on the Texas Whiskey <laughs> Trail. Actually, honestly, that's one one of the uh, other benefits, because whenever a distillery is on any kind of whiskey trail, in the back of their mind, they know they are being compared yeah. to the other. Nobody wants to be the dud. And it gets everybody to up their game a little bit. Yeah, so especially like the smaller craft guys, whenever they're getting started, they're always focused on the equipment and the actual product. The business side of getting things to retail and yeah, modeling. And they're not really thinking about that experience, but getting on a trail, That's pretty quickly they realize how they need to up their game. Yeah, it bumps it to the top. So. Did you miss me? Yeah. There was hesitation. Yeah.